Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hello, friends. I have a magic key. Yes, you do. This is uh, an unexpected follow-up to our earlier Disneyland report about when uh, <laughs> when Morgan took us back to Disneyland. And at the time, we were like, okay, we're good for either the rest of the year or until some sort of pass system comes back. And uh, some sort of pass system came back. Yeah, yeah. Dave is the only one in the household that currently has a magic key because of work. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to utilize one at the moment. So I'm letting him have the joy until I can make that happen for myself. Well, we are uh, figuring out because things may be shifting in your work life, but we're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. So we're figuring out uh, which tier key would be best for you to get when Mm -hmm. the time comes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um. But I, with my own money, was just like, fuck it, I'm going for it. And uh, I sprang for the most expensive key, I, which I think is the dream one, but I can't remember. You have the king of all keys currently, because, well, m- primarily because in free parking is involved with that one. And- that's, that's the main reason. Yeah, I'm looking at the app. Yeah, I, I went with the dream key, mostly for the parking, because when I first moved to California, my parents actually bought me for my birthday... They paid the difference between the cheapest pass and the most expensive pass for me for a year for my birthday. And uh, that was their gift. And then in the years that came, eventually I downgraded, but only at a point where I could do parking as an Mm add-on at a lower tier pass. Because I just don't want to have to think about paying for parking when I'm going to go somewhere. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, uh, but now that parking is no longer an add-on not currently available as an add-on on any other tier. I was like, well, I'm springing for the expensive one. And also because I do like the flexibility of getting to go whenever I want, as long as reservations are available. Absolutely, yeah. I like not having to think about blackout days because uh, those can be an issue if like someone's going to be in town and we want to go to the park with them, for yeah. instance. Yeah, and also our feeling was too, like when our other friends also get their magic keys and when they want to come down to Disneyland, they can just leave their cars at our undisclosed location apartment and then just have Dave just drive us all in. I mean, we've already confirmed that we live in Anaheim, yeah. so we're, we're, we're not uh, telling tales out of school for that. True, um, true. But yes, finally, as an Anaheim resident, I have access to Disneyland <laughs> on a regular basis. Your plan came true. <laughs> just in time for the Halloween decorations to go up <laughs> everywhere. Which, I mean, I like the park's Halloween decorations, but, you know, it goes straight from Halloween to Christmas, so... If I need more B-roll of anything in its non-holiday form, I'm out of luck till January, but hey. Well, hey. To get into details, uh, we are currently recording this the evening of Friday, the 27th of August. Mm-hmm. Uh, Magic Key started this past Wednesday, the 25th. I did some social media things at the time, so people who are following closely may have followed some semblance of the trajectory, although I was not live tweeting every second like some people I saw. (laughs) But uh, basically, the Magic Key page was supposed to be accessible at 10 o'clock a.m. Before that, if you clicked on Magic Key, it says, come back here no no earlier than 10 a.m. And uh, it was still saying that until at least 10.09 a.m. when I filmed that TikTok. Yeah, yeah. About, like, no earlier than 10 a.m. It is not earlier than 10 a.m., so what? what's the deal? And uh, it wasn't trending, but I just searched the phrase Magic Key on Twitter to see, you know, just to see, is this just a glitch on my end? And no, nobody was getting access to Magic Key. Yeah. And I think it was, like, around 10.20 or so that I was uh, moved from the comeback after 10 a.m. screen to the waiting room, where it said my estimated wait was at least an hour. Yeah. So I decided to uh, go do some errands, uh, <laughs> got some groceries and stuff. When picked I came, up, picked up the oat milk for uh, lattes and things like that. Yeah, you know all, all of our usual bougie bullshit that we can afford because it's cheaper than people think it is. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, to, to to live our pseudo luxury lifestyle as very poor people. <laughs> Very poor people who nevertheless budgeted to buy a very expensive Disney pass, but, uh, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. So when I get back from the grocery store, I look at the screen. The progress bar was like a third of the way through, but it still said estimated wait more than an hour. Mm Mm-hmm. So I worked on some stuff, kept checking back on the tab, kept being paranoid about accidentally closing the tab and losing my place in line. (laughs) 
I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Clicked X when I didn't mean to click X. Eventually the progress bar is like halfway through and it still said more than an hour. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm working on some other stuff, checking back from time to time. Eventually I check back and the progress bar is like, it looks like it's like 90% of the way through and the thing says uh, estimated wait about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I can no longer focus on my work, <laughs> and yeah. I'm just watching this thing like a hawk, uh, just getting up to walk around the room anxiously, excitedly popping back to look at the screen. So eventually I get through the queue, fill out the forms. Like I said, I spring for the expensive pass, and I know I could save money by just getting a lift each time and not thinking about parking at all. I, I know in the long run that would be cheaper. But again, I also want the no blackout dates. No, no, it's it's understandable. It's understandable. You want to be able to get a reservation on a random Wednesday in the afternoon if that's possible, which I, I, I wished I could do that. <laughs> well, it's kind of like there's no cheap Disney pass. Like there's a cheapest Disney pass, but mm. it's like, you know, like $400 or whatever for the cheap one, which like... Yeah, that is significantly more affordable, but at a certain point, once once I'm past a certain amount of money, I'm like, I might as well splurge. No, of course, of course. Um, and yeah. This is me with shoes, you know, folks, just like, you know, it's like once you get past a certain amount of money, it's like, well, I might as well just like go in for like, I don't know, orthopedic support and some shit like that. <laughs> And it's also just like with taking lifts or public transport or whatever, like I never feel like I'm in control in that situation. And I like feeling like I have some semblance of control over my Disney days. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just always justify it to myself that I can afford the monthly payment. Of course, while I'm filling out the forms, springing for the expensive pass, I can't figure out how to select the monthly payment. Oh, I didn't hear about this portion of the whole thing. Well, okay, so, so this, <laughs> So this part is kind of a blur. I don't remember exactly how this went down because I was just like pure stress and adrenaline at this point. Valid. But I think what happened was something like this. At some point in the process, like after choosing my pass and like seeing my cart and like leading towards a checkout screen, but not quite at a checkout screen. At some point in the process, it asked me to log into my Disneyland.com account. So I did. And after I logged in, then it showed me a version of the selection page where it included the monthly payment options. Ah, uh, okay. Where I could choose lump sum or monthly payment on the menu. That's good. I guess because Disneyland.com knows my login that I'm a SoCal resident. So I click on monthly payment, and it says now that I have two magic keys in my checkout cart. Ah. But... It apparently prepared for this. It says, do you want to remove the other one? Like, uh -huh. are you trying to buy two or do you want to remove the other one? Yes, yes, I do. So I click remove and the website crashes. Oh, no. <laughs> this oh, is, no. This is when I start to go into panic mode. But uh, fortunately, when I refresh the website and log in again, fortunately, it looks like before it crashed, it saved my cart settings. So it had my cart with just the monthly payment option. The other key is not there. I'm able to check out with no further issues. Tremendous relief, but that was a nerve wracking couple of seconds I, I there. I can imagine, darling, yes. I was like, am I gonna have to wait another hour? And this whole time I'm thinking, like I know how much people have been waiting for an annual pass to come back. And they haven't said anything to the effect, but part of me is thinking, what if they're, like, really limiting sales on this shit? Mm -hmm. Like, I think instead of limiting sales, they're just, uh, you know, limiting reservations per day. But I still have in the back of my mind, like, what if something goes wrong and they somehow run out? You know? <laughs> but, uh, fortunately, it's not an issue. After some weird stresses and difficulty navigating, I finally... I'm able to pay money, pay the down payment for my new annual pass, the dream key, magic key. I am the key master. <laughs> Are you the gatekeeper? Oh my. So now I spend some time navigating the website, trying to figure out where I make reservations. And I keep clicking on links that I think will take me there, but they just end up being like explanation links about reservations mm -hmm. <laughs> or like what explanations on why reservations are needed with no click here to make a reservation, which 
seems like it should be Web Design 101, but all these Disney websites that still run on go.com are still kind of nightmares. <laughs> oh, no, I can imagine, yeah. Like, it's amazing that Disney Plus is a functional website when every other Disney website as part of the Go network is, like, still combining all the worst elements of modern websites with all the worst elements of websites from 1998. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks, but I eventually get out of this link tree hell I'm stuck in. I just go back to the homepage, go to the drop-down menu for parks and tickets, ticket and reservation details. On that page, there's a button that says make park reservations. I go there, and I'm originally thinking I'm just going to see what's available. Because I'm figuring after hours of this and after everyone else is dealing with this... I might be able to book something for like November. Yeah, you know? no, for sure. I'm thinking again. I'm still going into this with a real scarcity mindset, just because. Yeah. Well, the past year has just instilled a scarcity mindset in us. I mean, the supply chains are still fucked. I wouldn't be surprised if this, the reservation supply chain would also still be fucked at this point. So. And yet, to my surprise. There is full availability. <laughs> Everything is, despite how long I've been waiting to deal with this, and despite knowing how many people were, you know, setting alarms to make sure this would all happen, there is full availability. So I am able to make a same day reservation. <laughs> nice. Now, I know I don't have a lot of time to spend in the park on this fine Wednesday, because by this point, it's like 1 45 p.m., and my darling wife here had a dentist appointment after work that I had to get her to. True, true. So I was on a schedule. And more importantly, we had important kava business to have. Allie's dentist office is right next door to a kava, and she's been looking forward to having dinner at kava basically since you booked the appointment. Yeah, kava is a it's a local chain back out in DC, and there's uh, they're slowly coming to other places around the country. But I have not seen one really since we moved out here. And now to know that there's one within distance, I was like, I can get my teeth clean and then go get some pita bread. Fuck yeah, man. So at this point, I'm like booking the same day reservation, not because I expect to actually like fully experience Disneyland on this trip, mm -hmm. but partly just to test out to make sure this all actually works. No, of course, of course. And also like, I do want to set foot inside Disneyland now that I have the option. And also, I honestly wanted you to be the guinea pig for all this for when I inevitably get mine to like, you know, figure out how not to do things. Oh, I guinea pigged the hell out of this day. Ooh. <laughs> So yeah, I head down to Disneyland, park in Mickey and Friends, and I'm originally thinking I might take the bridge to downtown Disney and head into the park that way, but then I catch a glimpse of how short the security line is at the garage, because, you know, it's it's two in the afternoon. Uh, so I decide to go through the regular security and do the tram path walk, which we talked about last time. It's still a wild thing. It, it like just walking along the tram path is still very weird. Mm -hmm. It's not the most pleasant way to start a Disneyland day, and it's an even less pleasant way to end a Disneyland day, mm -hmm. but you don't have a lot of options anymore. I always liked walking to the park when I had the option, but like being forced to walk just makes me feel like, oh, I'm really missing this tram. But I make it to the end of the tram path. I head to the gate for Disneyland Park. I scan the barcode they emailed me from my magic key on the phone. And I'm inside Disneyland. Bum, bum, ba. I was kind of expecting them, you know, when I scanned my magic key, they took the picture of me so that that would be in the record. Mm -hmm. I kind of expected them to, like, print out a pass for me like they do at, you know, every park. I later yeah. looked into this. Apparently, you only get a physical pass if you pay an extra $20. And it's just a paper pass, like the one to three day tickets or like the Universal Studios passes. Yeah. Which is weird. Like, and I felt like when they announced the Magic Key, I felt like there was imagery of people holding like plastic looking cards that were yeah. the same kind as the old annual pass cards, but that, that just say Magic Key on them. Or at the very least, like for folks who still have their annual passes, they could just like add that to their plastic card and just go boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the logistics would be of that, but it would sure be nice if I could just attach my Magic Key to my old annual pass card, which I still have. But I don't know if that's actually feasible. Like, I'm fine just scanning my phone every time or even just printing out the barcode myself and bringing that every time. Like, just printing out my own card. I'm not going to pay $20 for a paper uh, annual pass. Mm -hmm. But it, especially because, like, the old, 
you know, plastic annual pass card, if you lost that, it, it was like $10 to get a replacement. Yeah. So this is clearly they are uh, looking for ways to make up some loss income from the past year. But, money, uh, money, money, money. But hey, I am fine just scanning my phone each time, especially ever since uh, for, I don't remember if we've mentioned this on the show, but for a brief minute a few years ago, you worked at the suitcase company Away. Yes. Uh, which famously uh, sells suitcases that have uh, USB chargers that come with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can remove the charger and uh, bring that along. And it is like the longest lasting phone charger I've yeah. ever used. And, so. and, and may I say, ladies and gentlemen, I talk a lot of shit about my, my previous employment at Castro Mattresses because it was kind of crap. Away, while not a great workplace, it is a solid product. So... Away, mm -hmm. sponsor us, goddammit, it! Because I will talk all the good stuff about your suitcase that's <laughs> starting to come. But those batteries, man, are a fucking lifesaver, honestly. Those batteries are great, and yeah, like if I still had my old phone, I would be like really frustrated about needing to use it so much. But with our new phones that actually work, I'm uh, <laughs> and with rechargers that actually last a long time, I'm fine with this. Yeah. But it's still weird. Like, I was kind of looking forward to just having a thing to hold mm -hmm. and like a nice, like, plastic thing to hold but I'm, I'm not paying twenty dollars to print no, the thing no no especially for its paper so anyway it is about uh 2 50 p.m at this point basically an hour after i made the reservation i am inside disneyland <laughs> and less than five hours after i waited in a virtual line to buy the ticket and to celebrate your victory i had a frozen reese's cup Yay! First thing I see inside the park is Cruella de Vil on the Main Street train platform doing some socially distanced villainy. So you didn't tell me which uh, uh, variant of Cruella was up there. Was it a uh, 60 or... It is OG Cruella. Okay, it, it, it is the 60s animated... Cru I mean, human cast member, obviously, but it is, Abby, the, Abby. it is the animated Cruella. She was asking me if I have any pets at home. I say our, our former roommates did, and they're not far from here. <laughs> so... You know, again, I'm just here to be here to test it out. So I basically walk the perimeter of the park. I pop into Toontown, which we didn't do on our last visit. Uh, so mm -hmm. I see all the uh, runaway railway construction. Oh, very cool. <laughs> basically, like, the entire back of Toontown. Like, this is a huge show building they're putting in. Like, mm -hmm. it stretches basically from Roger Rabbit to Mickey's house, this, this show building wow. they got back there. And it's got, you know, people have probably seen on social media the pictures, but it's got a banner on it saying, uh, what big building? <laughs> like, Oh, that's cute. That's and, cute. From, from uh, uh, let, let, let me, let me look up, um, the image. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the, uh, caption on it was. I just remember the, uh, the video that was going around of the, uh, the short work wall in front of it. And people were just able to see the crane, just like knocking nonsense down into a town. Everybody like yes. freaking out. I, I did see some of the demolition of the former gag factory, which, uh, I, I, I saw some just ripped apart facades and it's, <laughs> it's wild. Uh, <laughs> we're like, no. Yes, yes, the uh, the the banner says, What big building? There's no big building here. Paid for by the Toontown Department of Implausible Deniability. <laughs> so it's a very funny gag, but hopefully when construction's done, they'll actually put facade back on covering that up. Yeah. Because uh, it's a funny gag, but not a uh, permanent good gag. No, for sure, for sure. But I uh, continue to walk the perimeter. Uh, I circle around Toontown a bit, then I head over to Fantasyland. Uh, I realize I want to get some footage of the Evil Queen opening the curtains above the Snow White ride, because, uh, patrons who saw the Throw Forward Thursday, and actually not even patrons, because, uh, I played this on the live stream, but, uh, when I did the Throw Forward Thursday for the Fantasyland Dark Rides, some may have noticed that when I, uh, talked about the Evil Queen above the Snow White ride, I didn't have any of my own footage, I had footage from other sources, and still photos that people took and i wanted to get at least one of my own shots in there because the thing is when you've been working on the blitz travifornia for as long as i have mm -hmm. unless you keep very good track of all the footage you have of all the b-roll you've gotten there are some everyday sites in the parks that you are convinced you must have filmed by now in these six years you've been working on this only when the time comes to find oh Surely I thought I would have got that by now, but I guess every time I came to this park, I just assumed I already had this footage. 
So in the final cut, I want to have some of my own footage of the Evil Queen there, mm -hmm. even though the facade around it is slightly different now, but still, I, I just, I, I like to use my own footage as much as possible. <laughs> so I uh, popped into Fantasyland to get that shot, uh, and at the time of day it was, I could not get very good light on the queen, so I don't know if the footage is usable, but hey. So then I cut through Batu, walk through Critter Country and New Orleans Square, keep an eye on time because I have to get home at a certain point, so I don't ride anything this visit, but I do experience one attraction, the Tarzan Treehouse, because it's the attraction that is the exact same experience as just continuing to walk. Yeah, yeah. So my first Disneyland attraction as a Disneyland Magic Key holder was the Afterthought of Adventureland. <laughs> so I finish the perimeter and decide to walk through downtown Disney to take the bridge back to the garage, even though I didn't take the bridge this way. I'm just like, on the way back to the car, I want to look at downtown Disney, you know? Yeah, of course. And as I'm leaving downtown Disney through the exit by the Star Wars store that used to be Rainforest Cafe, I notice there's not a lot of security guys by that exit. Mm-hmm. And I soon discover that while everybody is allowed to exit there, currently that entrance is for cast members only. Oh. So it's a good thing I decided not to take the bridge to the park, because I probably would have been turned all the way back and forced to walk the long way anyway. Mm -hmm. So I do take the bridge back to the garage, and I see absolutely no signage by the bridge entrance letting anyone know that the downtown Disney entrance is cast member only right now. So just know in advance, in case you happen to go, Disney's not going to warn you, so I am. The bridge might not be an accessible entrance to the park anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they should have put a sign up at the bridge warning people, but uh, hey, I guess they can't afford that. <laughs> It's, it's wild to me because right now the only choice is to walk. There's no trams. You know, you have to walk. But you can't even choose which path you want to walk. Yeah. <laughs> like, eh, it's crazy. But uh, but in the garage, I do see one of my favorite things I've ever seen at Disneyland. So we see a lot of couples with matching shirts, right? Mm-hmm. Lots of, lots of matching shirt couples in the parks. This was the first time I ever saw a couple with matching shorts. They were like gym shorts uh -huh. that matched. And I dare you to guess what these gym shorts were of. Please tell me there was a reference to thick seats on the both of them. <laughs> if only. No, uh, nothing Disney adjacent. Okay. These shorts were the motion picture classic Step Brothers. What? You, you did not mention this, I don't think. The other. I did not mention this. I was saving this for the record. I hate you. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> on one leg of the shorts, it was the Olin Mills style photo that's on the poster of uh -huh. Farrell and Riley. And on the other leg was the phrase, did we just become best friends? This couple was wearing stepbrother shorts. I would like to meet these this couple and punch them in the face. <laughs> this is no. What the fuck? What's wrong with Step Brothers? I, I just, for some reason, this just feels bad. <laughs> I like Step Brothers, but just, just that existence of these shorts just feel bad. No, no. It's Disney adjacent, only that, like, Disney Plus's favorite person is Catherine Hahn right now. Yeah, yeah. Star of Step Brothers, Catherine Hahn. <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to sit on this for a while. I just, <laughs> I just don't know, man. <laughs> anyway, after seeing the couple with the matching Step Brother shorts, I got in my car, came home, and took you to the dentist. Yes. So the next day, Thursday the 26th, yesterday as we're recording this, we are recording this on the night of Friday the 27th. Yes. We had some stuff we were doing in the morning and in the early afternoon, but in the morning I find myself thinking I kind of want to go back to Disneyland. Yeah. So at about 10 a.m. I check there are still reservations available for that day, so I make one thinking I'll just pop over for a bit after we're done with our stuff. So we do our thing, so I head over early afternoon, park at about 12.50, make it into DCA about 1.20. When I'm in DCA, I say, what the hell, let's see what Rise of the Resistance boarding groups look like. People might remember, uh, boarding groups open at 7 a.m. and again at noon. So this is almost an hour and a half into the second boarding group window, and I managed to book group 
273. Oh, wow. Which the app is very clear with me. This is a backup boarding group. It will only be called if there is capacity for more riders. Mm -hmm. So I figure, okay, I'm probably not riding Rise of the Resistance today. I didn't really expect to, but... Man, how chill a day is it going to be in the park if there's so few people that I was able to book even a backup group at like 1.22 p.m.? Yeah, seriously. The annual pass was just introduced, just reintroduced. I'm expecting people are like me testing it out, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess people have like real jobs that uh, happen during the work week. No, nothing about that. No, nothing oh, about that honey. at all. I'm sorry to rub my freelance privilege in your <laughs> in your face. Well, you may have freelance privilege, but I, I provide the health care for this family, so. True. Yeah. <laughs> so I walk around DCA. I walk to Hollywoodland, which we didn't really explore much when we went with Morgan last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we were hyper-focused on seeing the new stuff and not really caring about the old stuff. Yes. So now that I'm stepping foot into Hollywoodland for the first time since, you know, lockdown, I see all the Marvel Disney Plus photo ops that we didn't really explore. Mm-hmm. And I also see where they used to do that Spider-Man meet and greet on that like sort of like New York stoop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a new photo op there for that new Spidey and his amazing friends Disney Junior series. Oh, cute. You know, the one where Disney is basically doing Into the Spider-Verse babies because they own all those characters and can do whatever they want on TV as long as it's shorter than 44 minutes long. Hey. So I continue to walk around. I walk towards Avengers Campus. And Mission Breakout has a 10-minute wait. It was at that moment when you text that to me, I just got irrationally angry for no apparent reason. Just like, <laughs> ugh! <laughs> I mean, you could buy a pass, too. I know, I know. And we'll see what... what and I, 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 I'm planning on it. We'll see if I can skip a day to actually go and do it. But, you know... Well, we'll see if you need to buy one of the passes that uh, allows you in on weekends or if you can afford something a little cheaper. Yeah, yeah. But, yes... My first ride back as a magic key holder is Mission Breakout. And I get Born to be Wild, which isn't my favorite of the ride profiles, but it's still so good to be back on Mission Breakout and to have what would basically have been a walk-on were it not for all the pausing for pre-shows and doors that you have to do in yeah, that queue. Yeah, yeah. Le like, they were doing the full pre-show. I had seen some reports that earlier in pandemic times, they were, like, not making you stop in the pre-show room. They were just doing the sort of... QR code on the screen, and then if you scan that in the app, you'd get like texts from Rocket, mm -hmm. which I thought was a cute workaround. That's but uh, cool. but uh, as of yesterday, full pre show with the Rocket animatronic, everything is fully functioning. Cool. Uh, they are saying like the current rule in the park is all indoor spaces you need to wear a mask. Okay. And cast members on attractions were very good at reminding everyone mask needs to be over the nose mouth and chin mm -hmm. so i applaud the cms for dealing with everyone's bullshit yeah. in orange county anyway my first ride back is mission breakout again which we didn't do earlier this year on what we thought might be our only disneyland visit of the year mm -hmm. it's good to be back on mission breakout yeah so i walk deeper into avengers campus i mobile order lunch for myself and while I'm waiting for the order to be ready, I watch the Spider-Man show again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the Spider-Man character experience. Uh, it's a shortened version of the show compared to last time I saw it, but I am standing at a much better angle this time, so I have a much better view. And then I head to Pim Test Kitchen to pick up my lunch. I had a little trouble with the app glitching and not showing my order, so I couldn't press the I'm here button the second I got there. Uh, but I eventually get that sorted out. I get the giant pretzel to bring home to you. Yay. Which I stuff in a gallon freezer Ziploc bag. And even then I have to like crush it and fold it in <laughs> on itself to get it to fit. Mm -hmm. And uh, for myself, I get something I hadn't tried last time, which is the PB3 Superb Sandwich. Mm -hmm. Now I find out the reason it's called PB3 is that it's peanut butter and banana and bacon. Oh, okay. The three Bs are for butter, banana, bacon. It, it's candied bacon, which is interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we've discussed on mic before that we find bacon kind of overrated, <laughs> but... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't dislike it. I just uh, didn't really need bacon it in was, my peanut butter and banana it sandwich. It was gilding the lily at that point. Yeah, but like as a theme park novelty food, I get it. And... 
it did very much feel like something Scott Lang would make <laughs> if he was like raiding Hank Pym's kitchen. Oh yeah, totally. I, I'm excited. The next time I do go there, I really want to try that Impossible Spaghetti that they have. Oh yeah, Which yeah. I think the last, it's one of the last things that I we have not tried together, or at least we've not. Yes, yes, yes. That'll be a good one for next time. Oh yeah, the sandwich also came with like a shot glass full of banana smoothie, which was fine, but it's like at a certain point, it's like so much banana. It's I, a hat on a hat. Yeah, a, li a little bit. Like, the banana smoothie would have gone better, I think, with some of the other food items than yes. with the peanut butter banana bacon sandwich. Um, also, the bread of the sandwich had, like, blue streaks in it because comic books. Because bacteria. <laughs> I guess. Because science. So I continue my way around the park. I make my way to Cars Land, which is fully decked out for Halloween already. And uh, I walk towards the back of Cars Land... Radiator Springs Racers has a 35-minute wait. I think that's the shortest I've ever seen. Yeah, that wait. I've never seen it any like shorter than like 120 minutes, so that's wild. There's maybe been like one or two other times I've seen it that short. 35-minute wait for Radiator Springs Racers. On top of which, they're actually doing single rider again. Hey! And single rider is a walk-on. <laughs> so I go down the single rider line, I Radiator Springs race, I have a great time. Then I make my way over to Pixar Pier. Incredicoaster has a 10 minute wait, but I'm not feeling it right now because I have a stomach full of banana and bacon. Mm -hmm. And uh, those bunny hops at the end of Incredicoaster always fuck me up. Yeah, yeah. Like no, ma no matter what is in my stomach or not in my stomach, those little hills at the end just always fuck me up. Uh, but I appreciate that the line is looking so good. But Toy Story Midway Mania has a 20-minute wait. Again, shortest I've ever seen it. I, this, yeah. This is a ride that you still haven't been on in the full year you had an annual pass in the f before time. Yeah. Because the line was always so long and the fast passes were always gone, gone. already. It's, it's like, I'm, I'm hoping by the time you get your magic key, things are still kind of like this in the park. Or that we're at least able to find the days where things are like this so you can actually get on Toy Story Mania sometime. Someday. But I ride Toy Story Mania. Then I head over around the pier and I decide to ride Mermaid because even in the before times, it was usually a walk-on. Mm -hmm. I get off Mermaid, stroll around the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail a bit. I get skunk on, in the uh, Spirit Cave. Nice. Uh, come back around Grizzly Peak and Grizzly Peak Airfield, complete the circle of the park. And I decide to head back into Hollywoodland to check out Philhar Magic with the new Coco scene. Mm-hmm. Uh... Not going to spoil any details, but uh, the new Coco scene is brief, but it's it's good. It just feels weird seeing a PhilharMagic scene with characters who are actually designed for CG. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but I like it, and I like that it doesn't replace anything. They actually made the show longer. Oh, which, that's cool. Which is, again, not significantly longer, but it's so rare, I feel mm -hmm. like, for that to be the treatment. Um, but I also would not mind if they turned Phil Har Magic into a Star Tours deal where some scenes are swapped out at random each time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, DCA's Phil Har Magic still has all the problems it always had of like, oh, clearly the show was not designed for this size screen and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And they're never gonna fix those problems in DCA, and I wish they would just bring back Muppet Vision in DCA, but I know that's not gonna happen at this point. Yeah. So then I head over to the shawarma cart by the Hyperion Theater, and the, the, the waiting room for the Hyperion Theater, or the waiting, like, courtyard for the Hyperion Theater is now overflow seating for Avengers Campus. Um, so I enjoy some shawarma, but first I pop into Pim's for an orange vanilla Coke from the Freestyle Machine, mm -hmm. so I can uh, chase my shawarma with one last orange vanilla Coke for the night. At this point, it's like 6.15 p.m. or so, and yeah. I decide to switch parks. But before I go to Disneyland proper, first I want to try something that I can only have when I'm not going to be kissing you in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is Starbucks has this new apple crisp macchiato for the fall. Yeah, yeah. I've been seeing, watching some TikToks about how to recreate it at home recently. And uh, since you are allergic to apples, yeah. I try not to consume apple products around you it's i appreciate that i i uh, because you also have a sus pineapple possibility we i've been trying to do the same for you my love yes we are uh i i have not been able to actually get allergy tested yet so i don't know if i'm allergic to pineapples but we know that you are or at least were allergic to apples yeah 
So I mobile order a decaf apple crisp macchiato from the downtown Disney Starbucks, head over there, and it was okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it could just be because my mouth still had the flavor of orange vanilla Coke in it, mm -hmm. but I barely tasted any apple in the drink, mostly mm -hmm. just espresso. Yeah. It also could have just been that, like, the syrup bottle was running low or like i i know how many things can go wrong when making a starbucks drink believe me i know yes you do so uh i could have just gotten a bad batch or my flavor profile at the moment just might not have been uh ready for an apple crisp macchiato so i think i will try it again at some point but uh so far i'm not super impressed despite the fact that there was an article trending on Twitter that was like, Starbucks new drink is, dare I say it, better than the pumpkin spice. And I tried it, and no. <laughs> Besides, everyone knows that the uh, the pumpkin hot chocolate is truly the best thing that Starbucks has to offer this time of year. Certainly, certainly. But also, uh, we found a coffee shop uh, in Anaheim that not only is a themed coffee shop, but it also has pumpkin year round. Yeah, so, so it we're, has a, we're happy. <laughs> yeah, it has a pumpkin drink year round. So I'm sure we'll talk about that coffee shop at another time. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I'll try the apple crisp macchiato again sometime when I don't have other flavors on my mouth, but uh, so far not impressed. Mm -hmm. But uh, around 6.30, I make it into Disneyland proper and I decide to do something we swore we'd never do again. Evening Splash Mountain. <laughs> you all swore to never do it again. I was not affected, so I'm happy to continue doing it until I get fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, people may not know this story, but it was in March of 2019. I believe it was the last time Kevin visited before he moved here. Yeah. And it was you, me, Kevin, Haley, Zach, Cassie, and uh, Chris Nebergall. And it was like evening and we were like hey there's no wait for splash mountain let's do it and some of us mostly chris and Haley, but several of us got so soaked and the sun was already set so we were just like cold and wet the rest of the night mm -hmm. but uh at this point while i'm here in the evening like that was in march this is august yeah and it's hot enough out and the sun's not so low yet and I'm like, if they're doing single rider, I'll be able to make it through and out before the sun really goes down. Absolutely. And sure enough, they were doing single rider. And I don't know how long Splash Mountain will be available before they close it to make it slightly less racist. Which, again, I am fully in favor of the Splash Mountain refurb. 100% mm -hmm. on board. But uh, I'm also just going to ride the current version while I can. Like, if it were up to me... The refurb would have happened a decade ago. At the bare minimum, yes. <laughs> but uh, but a as long as I have a chance to say goodbye to an attraction, I do it. Mm -hmm. um, or to a version of an attraction. Uh, so I ride Splash Mountain. I'm in the back seat because I'm single rider line. And I end up barely getting wet anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So I get off Splash, and I decide to do Pirates, which is also basically a walk-on. Yeah. Like, I am having just a good run of, uh... Solid day, sweetheart. It, solid day. It is a solid day. It is a solid day. So I get on Pirates, and I'm thinking afterwards, you know, after Pirates, I'll do Jungle Cruise, because I want to see, like, the new stuff they did to Jungle Cruise, because... When we went with Morgan, it was still closed for the refurb. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking Jungle Cruise after Pirates. Except while I'm on Pirates, I get the notification that they are calling my Rise of the Resistance boarding group. Ooh. <laughs> they actually made it through them all. Holy shit. There must have been no downtime for the ride that day for them to get yeah. all the way to the backup groups. So I get off Pirates. I backtrack to Batu. I scan my boarding group. I book it through the line. There are none of those backups like there were the first time we rode it. Oh, God, yeah. I watch the pre-show, and I do Rise of the Resistance, and it's still awesome. I'm so glad, baby. It's still Rise of the Resistance. It's still awesome. Uh, we talked about Rise of the Resistance extensively in the second and third episode of this very podcast. Indeed we did. You can go back into the archives. Uh, I still am not going to talk about details now in case people are still avoiding spoilers. Again, I know lots of people still haven't had a chance to get to the parks. So if you're still avoiding Rise spoilers, I'm not going to go into too many details. Um, I'll just say there's a moment when you're boarding the ride vehicle where there's a Resistance cast member 
who's telling you about this reprogrammed droid. And uh, the cast member had a very funny line where he's like, I reprogrammed this R5 to take you to the skate pods. I hope it worked. I haven't done this in over a year. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. I love when the cast members can get meta like that. Yeah. <laughs> So when I left Rise, I uh, looked at the screen. They were boarding up to group 288 when I left Galaxy's Edge. Oh, wow. So they must have been having a good day. Yeah. It was a perfect storm of an empty enough park that I could get a group and smooth enough operations for the ride that they didn't lose time breaking down and they could accommodate every group. Mm -hmm. This might have been like the best day in Disneyland history. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> So after Rise, I go to Jungle Cruise to see the new scenes. And uh, again, I'm not going to get into spoilers. I'll just say there are not very many new scenes. Mm -hmm. One of them is barely changed at all. And in fact, the uh, skipper jokes have not been changed at all for that uh -huh. one. And uh, the others are more noticeably changed. But if I had only barely remembered the ride, I don't think I would have noticed the differences. Yeah. Like I might have kind of remembered, hey, didn't there used to be this thing? But I wouldn't know where it was. Yeah. And I wouldn't necessarily remember that the new scenes hadn't always been there. Mm -hmm. Like the new scenes are integrated very well. And yeah, there's barely any new scenes, but I think they're general improvements and they still fit the spirit of the Jungle Cruise. And I'm glad they're not just... Jack Sparrow-esque scenes from the movie mm -hmm. being shoehorned in. Still haven't seen the movie. I hear it's very good, but we just haven't had a chance to see it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually we'll, we'll talk about it. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, we've seen it. Who yeah. knows? The one thing I will say about my ride, aside from the new scenes, uh, the waterfall was turned off. There was no water running over the waterfall, so there was no Schweitzer Falls joke. Uh -huh. And when we were coming around at the end, the skipper line was, and folks, the moment you've all been waiting for, the backside of water isn't working today. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Look, everyone needs a break, okay? <laughs> yeah, so that was that was solid. Uh, so then I backtrack again and do Indy, which has a 20-minute wait. Mm -hmm. This was the only place where I noticed a shortened pre-show. Uh, you know the queue where it zigzags in front of the projector and they do the newsreel and, yeah, then, yeah, and yeah. then the Sala scene. They weren't doing the newsreel. They were only doing the Sala scene and they were doing a shortened version of the Sala scene. Weird. Like it, he talked about the pouches, but they cut like the, you see the excellence of this invention bit about the seatbelts and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it was a very condensed version, which was weird, but also the line was moving so quickly that we couldn't really linger in there long enough to experience the normal pre-show anyway. So Maybe that's why. Maybe when the line's moving so fast, they're just like, it's important they get the real safety rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I do indie, which is classic. Uh, then I go back to Fantasyland because I'm thinking, maybe I can get footage of the Evil Queen at night. Maybe that'll be a clearer shot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, while I'm in Fantasyland, like, it's like 8... 50 something like the fireworks are about to start so fantasy land is pretty clear mm -hmm. and i noticed that the line for pan is a lot shorter than it usually <laughs> is and i'm like fuck it i'm feeling bold yeah uh and i'll just say i was able to time this because you actually uh called me right as i got in line for pan and we talked a little bit uh while i was in line and then when I got off, I looked at the time and I compared it to the time when you called me. From getting in line to getting off the ride was less than 20 minutes. That's wild. This that is, is Peter wild. Pan's flight. That, that is wild. The only time the line has ever been that short is like if we get on right after it's back up from breaking down. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do the other dark rides, but I was just like, when am I going to have this opportunity again? No, exactly. Peter Pan's flight, let's do it. But the uh, the funny thing was uh, the fireworks started while I'm under the canopy of the building. So I can hear the fireworks, but from where I am, I can't see the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very funny. We get a better view of the fireworks from our apartment building <laughs> than... Uh, it's, it's, yeah, that, that's than, amazing. Than I got from actually being in the park, which was kind of hilarious. Mm -hmm. Eventually the line moved around. It's like, ah, oh, now I can see the fireworks. Uh, but yes, yes, there you go. Um, but also uh, another thing in the throw forward for the Fantasyland rides that I didn't have any of my own footage of was that little Tinkerbell that shows up if you play the game in the Play Disney app. Yeah. 
and I was in line behind a family who played the game and unlocked Tinkerbell. I was like, oh, fuck, I should film this. And by the time I switched my phone to camera mode, it was too late and Tinkerbell disappeared again. Mm -hmm. But as I'm getting off Peter Pan, I'm like, okay, there's some overflow queue that is not being used because look how fast the line's moving. Yeah. Some overflow queue right over by where the Tinkerbell lantern is. I can just go over there and I will just play the game myself to make Tinkerbell appear. Yeah. And then once I have, like, quickly switch over from Play Disney to my camera yeah. to, to get my own footage so I don't have to use the stills that I stole from Laughing Places Twitter account mm. that I have in the rough cut right now. Um, or in the Patreon cut right now. Did not realize that the game that makes Tinkerbell appear requires at least two players. Ah, oh, well... We know for next time. I know for next time. Well, but instead I'm just like, you know what? One of these families is going to be playing this stupid game. Mm -hmm. So I just wait by there, just filming the lantern, and eventually get a shot of Tinkerbell appearing. Oh, very cool. I get the footage I need. Maybe someday I'll come back and get a better shot of it, but I at least have some footage of my own of the thing to put back in for the final cut. Mm -hmm. If I never get better footage, I at least have that footage. Yeah. And I'm just not taking for granted any footage opportunities anymore, because who knows when the parks could all suddenly close again no, forever. for sure. So, I get that footage, and I realize, okay, my first ride of the day was Mission Breakout, my uh -huh. favorite ride in DCA. Since then, I've gotten to ride Indy and Rise of the Resistance, which are my top two favorite rides in Disneyland. Mm -hmm. And also Pirates, which is an all-time favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do Mansion because it's currently closed for uh, the holiday refurb, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but like, I have such a good track record of hitting my favorites. The only, uh, aside from Mansion, the only top five Disneyland Park favorite ride of mine that I have not been on yet today is Space Mountain. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm making my way over to Tomorrowland. I'm going to ride Space Mountain. Let's ride the dragon, shall we? <laughs> I make my way over to Tomorrowland. I cut across the uh, uh, Tomorrowland Terrace, the stage where they used to do the Jedi show. And they're playing, uh, in the style of the usual Tomorrowland music loop, they're playing an instrumental of the song from Wreck-It Ralph that was uh, used for the Paint the Night Parade. Oh, cool. The, the Owl City song. Which is actually really cool. I don't know how long that's been part of the loop for that area, but I had never heard that before, and it was uh, fun to hear. Um, make my way over to Space Mountain, and it's down. <laughs> Naturally. So I'm like, fine, I'll ride Buzz Lightyear because it's always a walk-on. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listeners may recall that last time we were at Disneyland this year, I ran to Buzz Lightyear just to walk through the queue and get footage and then leave without riding it. Mm -hmm. This time I actually ride it and it's just as mediocre as ever. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinions from the Throw Forward Thursday clip you've all seen have not changed. It's Buzz Lightyear, Astro Blasters, it's whatever. <laughs> but I get off Buzz Lightyear, Space Mountain is still down, so I'm like, okay. You know what? We got to ride Space Mountain with Morgan, and I'm having a really good track record of getting to come to Disneyland when I want, so I do not feel deprived of Space Mountain. I think I'm ready to call it a night. Yeah. But I want something sweet before I leave. Of course. So I decide to mobile order from Gibson Girl Ice Cream on Main Street. I decide to mobile order a cookies and cream root beer float. Delicious. Delectable. Oh, and it was. But then I see that my uh, return window for getting it was 10.20, and it's like 9.55 at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it probably would have been faster to just wait in line and buy it at the counter. But I've already mobile ordered it, so I just sit down on a bench by the hub, looking at the Walt statue and just reflecting on what an incredible Disneyland day I've had that started at like 1.30. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and I've managed to fit almost everything I really love in on this day. Mm -hmm. Like, not every Like, obviously, there's other rides I like a lot yeah. that we haven't done yet. But, like, so many of my very favorite things I've gotten to do today with almost no hassle. And, like, it's not like the park was empty. There were always people. There was always... But it was, like not crowded. It was the kind of Disneyland day... Well, last time I experienced it was that window after Galaxy's Edge opened when everybody was avoiding the park because they thought it would be too crowded. Mm -hmm. And that became a 
self-denying prophecy, I, I guess, guess. I guess. But I was just reflecting on what a good day I had. And then as part of that reflection, I thought, you know, I don't want my last ride today to have been Buzz Lightyear. Uh -huh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I just look at the app and see what has a short wait. Thunder Mountain, 10 minute wait. So I go back to Frontierland, go through Thunder Mountain, finish the day with Thunder Mountain. It's a classic. It's good. I didn't get to ride Space Mountain, but I got to ride my second favorite mountain roller coaster. And then it's time to go back to Main Street, pick up my root beer float. I leave. I once again walk through downtown Disney because then when I'm on the bridge, it's empty enough to feel comfortable taking off my mask to drink my root beer float while I'm walking back to the car. Mm -hmm. I get back to the car. I see that I got over 30,000 steps that day. <laughs> my Fitbit is working overtime. Mm -hmm. It's 11.20 p.m. I basically spent 10 hours on property, and I rode almost everything I really love, including Peter Pan, which I never ride. Folks, probably by the time you're hearing this, it's too late. Yeah. Probably by Tuesday, it is already, like, the park is probably already crazy crowded with Magic Key holders. Although, again, we don't know what the limits they put on reservations are, so, so uh... I don't know how crowded is crazy crowded. That said, as of right now, it is 8.28 p.m. Mm -hmm. on a Friday. And right now, if I wanted to, I could still get a reservation to go for the last couple of hours of the night. There are still reservations available for today. Yeah. There are no reservations left for tomorrow, which is a Saturday. <laughs> no shock there. But there are reservations left for Sunday. So I don't know how much longer same-day reservations will be an available thing. Might be a little longer on weekdays than on weekends. But uh, folks, do not sleep on the Magic Key. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This was one of the best solo Disneyland days I've had in ages. I'm so glad for you, baby. And partly it was because I went in with no expectations. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes think it's just the best way to do it is like no expectations. They'll be exceeded all every time. Yeah, like... The past couple of times I went uh, before lockdown were always times I was getting up early because I was going with the intent of riding Rise of the Resistance. Of course. And they weren't doing the noon reservation uh, virtual queue thing at that time. It was only the early morning virtual queues. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Magic Key, I'm happy with it. I'm sure the park will get crowded again. I'm sure the lines will go up again. I'm sure things will get tiring again. Of course. But this week, I went back to Disneyland, and I'm so happy I did. I just wish that they would let people know whether or not it was cool to use the bridge to downtown Disney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey. Mm -hmm. So honey, we're going to get you back to the park at some point soon. Someday eventually. At some point soon. Yeah. It may be splurging for another dream key for you. It may be getting a slightly lower tier mm -hmm. key. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, someday we will do Disneyland again together. We probably won't do a full episode about that unless it ends up being a particularly eventful visit. No, for sure. For sure. But for now, I'm so glad I have the option to go back to Disneyland whenever I want, as long as there are reservations available. But also, yesterday I did basically everything I love there, so I'm also okay not going for a couple of days. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling myself I'm set for the week, but probably by next Thursday I'll be like, eh, I'm itching to go again. Yeah, yeah. Because I know me. I know you well. Anyway, I will continue to get the B-roll of things I never realized I never got B-roll of. Hopefully I don't need too many things that are currently covered with holiday-specific decorations. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Disneyland is part of my regular life again, and, uh... It's good to be home. I don't like being one of those people who calls Disneyland my home, but that said, now that my home actually is Anaheim, it... <laughs> it... It would have been really annoying if the exact span of time we lived in Anaheim was the exact span of time I couldn't just go to Disneyland no, whenever course, I wanted. No, of course, of course, Anyway, we now live in Anaheim, and at least until there's another shutdown, <laughs> or until reservations become somehow too hard to get, mm -hmm. 
which, you know, could, like, I'm still operating from a scarcity mindset. I'm still feeling like any second now, now that I'm getting the word out about how easy it is to get to Disneyland, that's when there's going to be too much competition there for, uh, yeah. <laughs> for uh, reservation days. But, hey, if things change, things change. For now, I got a full satisfying Disneyland day. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Join us next week when we talk about something that's probably not a theme park. (laughs) Later days, y'all. Later days.